Right, going back into the mists of time now, well, I always forget which year it was we started to see Jerry Bikers. It's like 1982 or 3, but anyway, on the 28th of February we made our first ever sale of a cassette lead for a BBC Micro. And would you believe that we're actually having to start production again of them because there are people um, uh, buying, I noticed that actually there's someone else selling them on eBay and they've sold over a hundred in over about three years, admittedly, but they, so we thought, hmm, okay, we need to actually Make, make these um, available. We, we had a few in stock, but because we only had a very few left, we were charging a high price for them. But uh, we're now going to you know, restart production so the price will come down. But, uh, and also going back to the eras of um, the BBC, um, of course, the, it came out um, and offered Econet. And that used to be, or is, but uh, a very few in existence, um, Econet NICs, um, so little cards that would fit into your I know, wrist PC and give you Econet. And um, they've been selling at silly prices on eBay, and that's sort of like £99 because, you know, people want them. I'm not quite sure what they're doing with them, but they do want them. So um, after a bit of thinking about this, sort of, we've teamed up with a couple of people who like someone developed a uh, uh, a DIY a full size module um, uh, Econet interface. So we're looking at um, producing one commercially, so people actually buy it rather than have to design your lay out your own PCB, etc. And we're looking at offering um, built-in clock because that's the other thing is you need to have a clock for an Econet network. So but it would be, there's lots of spare space on the PCB, so we're looking at doing um, a Econet clock, and we'll probably have a multiple interfaces on the board, so that you could possibly um, run a small network just from, uh, without having to have the, the standard daisy chain cable, if you uh, if you know, I expect most people will remember, with Econet, you have to have a terminator, a cable with drop leads to each machine, a clock somewhere, preferably on the long one in the middle, or near the middle, um, connected onto it, and then extending to a terminator at the other end. And if you've got all your computers in like sort of one room, then you could get away with um, using sort of uh, slightly longer drop leads and have the end computers sort of act as sort of ones that are further away, being the computer that then has uh, using something called Y lead. Um, uh, terminator. Because yes, again, the it, rather than wire it improperly, the cheap, the cheaper way of making a network was you sort of buy little tiny little box blobs that were five pinned in, female, female, female. But um, they are extremely rare. But we have managed to find that there does seem to be exist a little splitter cable five pinned in. It does mean one of them is the wrong gender, but well, you need effectively one gender, um, uh, well, if you can do away with one cable, if you know what I mean, by using, by using it. So we're, we're producing those again. Um, then, um, if you want to bring uh, um, your older system, like say, so some people said, right, I've got data on an A5000, or I've got an A5000, and I want to get, to get data to and from my modern machine. Down on my modern machines have floppy drive. What do I do? Well, this is um, one way of doing it. it. It has some limitations and drawbacks. Basically, what this is, it's three and a half inch floppy form form factor, as they say. So it's screwing the place of a standard floppy disk. And on the back, it has a 34 pin connection and a floppy power connection, like you would normally expect. Um, but on the front, you will notice a USB port. And basically, what you do, uh, what you do is this: you put your um, something like a USB pen in here, and well, and it emulates a 1.44 megabyte floppy disk. But it is just <coughs> by default, it would be a single 1.44 megabyte floppy disk, and each pen would be 1.44 megabyte. 
So that's obviously not terribly useful, not that useful. So there are buttons on the front here and, and a three-digit LED, and effectively you can partition it to have 999 1.44 megabyte floppy disks. Um, there is special software for Windows to allow you to access all of those partitions, but the first partition is a standard sort of partition. Um, so you could plug it into you know, Raspberry Pi or an Ionix and access the first one. Now, what we're hoping for is that might be someone might think, ooh, that's interesting. And it's basically a microcontroller on board with, with a USB interface that emulates the, the, the floppy. Now, someone's already um, from scratch taken one of these reprogram the firmware to do um, a Amiga format. And Amiga, as a lot of people may remember, was a rather weird and wonderful, I think 880K was the sort of default size um, for it. So it is just a matter of programming. The hardware now exists, and so what would be really nice if someone could uh, think, mm, yeah, I could, well, I wouldn't be interested in doing something, work on that. Um, it's what I would like is for someone to come along and say, well, right, okay, well, we'll emulate 800K, 1.6 megabyte. And in actual fact, well, if you can get enough software in there, it might be that some microcontrollers have limited software capacity, but you might not have a pen that say, well, this pen is a 1.6 megabyte RISCOS pen, this pen, you know, is an 800K pen, or this pen is a PC 1.44, and then allow other systems, well, A, this system to automatically just see multiples of those and read it on other systems. But uh, that uh, is uh, an interesting thing that uh, will project if, uh, if anyone fancies doing the software, we'll certainly donate the hardware um, for it. But uh, that could be quite an interesting um, thing to do. Um, and if we really go down that line in, in, in that happens, we would be looking to possibly um, design our own hardware so that the then could be utilized in things like you know an A4 and A4 because the physical form factor or an A3010, 3020 where it physically what the, 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 the they expect a non-standard um, uh, drive physically <coughs> face here. And the early Archimedes because they use a non-standard face here as well. Um, and uh, rather than possibly using a USB pen, um, uh, actually use an SD card for storage, because once you can get a USB, in actual fact, you could, you could actually use an SD card by sticking a pen in, a, a, a card reader into it, and actually an SD card. Um, there are, I believe there is someone that actually does one, has done a similar product, <coughs> Two SD and says they can do some Acorn format. So, and of course, going back to even um, 100, you know, thinking of you know BBCB 100K, 200K, 400K formats. Um, uh, <coughs> so emulating a five and a quarter, um, and that should all be possible. Yes, so there's there's people doing it, but like they want you know. It's 100 odd pounds um, for that, and it's a bit limited. Um, it would be very nice if we could come up with, with a way of doing that. So that's that. Uh, then, well, yes, a, a big project that's not really got very far, unfortunately, um, at the moment is our idea of a RISCOS laptop. Um, having doing a bit of market research, we found that. Uh, Initially, we were thinking of doing one that uh, we put the draft specifications on uh, um, on the uh, I think it's on yes, it's actually on the pink leaflet um, because it's would be initially using certainly a Raspberry Pi compute module, um, say the graphics uh, offering a display of. Well, it's the most common size for laptop displays is 1366 by 768. Um, but a lot of people seem to be saying, well, you know, I'd be willing to you know, pay some money for a, for a risk-cost laptop, but are wanting higher resolution. So we're now looking to try to do that. And that's getting <coughs> HDMI 
to higher resolution LCD panel display in a really compact PCB is 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 the <coughs> problem that we're now we've got, but we're we we're, we're hoping we will get there sometime this year, but um, it's not going to be imminent. Um, sorry, excuse me a moment. I will just shorten some water. Something I expect you've all you've all now seen, um, but is well. Unless you went to the Southwest show, I don't think there's been a Wisconsin show since the Raspberry Pi 2 has been launched. But um, yeah, we've got good stocks for the Raspberry Pi 2 on on the stand, and we'll sell you just uh, you know the Raspberry Pi 2 itself, or a starter pack, or you know it cased in a mini ITX case, um, you yeah, know, looking like a standard computer with power and off switch, flashing LEDs for filing system mm -hmm. activities, SSD drive inside for storing your your, your data. We can uh, we do have versions for for that and it's available um, on the stand and the the Raspberry Pi 2 they did come up with this thing, oh it's six times faster than Raspberry Pi 1. Um, that was a bit of a bit of selective um, <laughs> Uh, benchmark figures there, and realistically, you know, with risk loss, people have I've come to the conclusion that it's sort of, I know, unless the, you've got something that can actually take advantage of it, which is virtually nothing at the moment, some of the new hardware, you are looking at sort of 35 40 percent speed improvement. Of course, you also get twice as much memory, so it is um, a certainly worthwhile little um, uh, uh, product there that we can supply. Of course, um, what with that happening um, and other computers coming out from other people, um, the Panda Row, which is um, you know, a great computer, that we have um, dropped the price significantly. We've now dropped, um, you know, depending on quite the model that you go for, um, what does it we say? It's uh, up, well, yeah, up to £266 off starting at £369, and if you're wanting a sort of, uh, a, um, an established computer, um, you know, some people say, I'm a user, I'm really into RISCOS, um, I don't sort of tinker with it, I want something that's sort of, you know, rock solid, then that really is sort of the, pot, the product um, to buy if you want a nice complete system, and at £369 is a absolute snip um, I feel and uh, well worth the money um, various options of cases and extras um, for that and the pro version um, as well which has some of the extras in it that uh, we, we have on the stand so that's the Pandora um, <clears throat> and before we come to um, uh, da, 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 so expand for a second Yes, and some of the more interesting thing of the very latest. Um, you may have, may have, I don't know, have been in and heard about the um, rules new release of RISCOS 522, which um, we helped uh, fund part of the final sort of um, getting. One aspect of it was one aspect of the uh, of Riscos that um, I, has annoyed me for a while now, because um, I also have use of um, like Risk Riscos, oh, sorry, Risk PC running Riscos six, and edit on on Riscos six mm. supports global cut and paste, and I, I use it quite ex quite a lot, and rather missed it on on Riscos five based machines, so. Um, I don't know if you were aware, but Riscos 5 now has, um, Riscos 522 has good cut and paste within edit, so you can cut and paste to and from, I know, data power, in tech writer, you, you know, all the ovation, um, you can now do that within Riscos, uh, within, sorry, within edit, um, and it's a good job. 
We also asked um, for another feature, I must admit, I should have actually been a little bit more specific because it not done quite what I was um, hoping for. And one thing that uh, if you run um, uh, quite, there's quite a lot of programs where Control S will swap the case of the character that you're next to. Um, data power, um, I had a long list actually, I, 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 I forget what they all were, but uh, uh, yes, impression, yep, yeah, um, well, yes, yes, yeah, single character, yep, yeah, um, impression, impression does it. If you've got, uh, there's an icon clipboard originally run, uh, programmed by Mr. Leonard, I think it is now, I think, maintained by Steve Fryatt, I might be wrong on that. But anyway, but that allows, um, also actually allows cut and paste into writable icons. Um, it also allows, um, actually offers control S within writable icons. And it's a sort of feature I almost now, I, I expect, oh, oh, it doesn't work in that program. And it didn't work in edit. Um, now what they've actually done in edit is they have implemented if you mark a block, it will swap the case of a block, um, which is is halfway there. But um, I'm hoping that they will um, do the um, just the individual character um, as well, because I find it a very useful feature. Because for those people that aren't touch typists, so they're not looking at the screen, it's a real pain when you've typed in you know a sentence and it's all in the wrong case. Um, uh, now, yeah, if you're in the most of these other programs, you know, impression and data power and whatever, it's easily done. You, you can, on the number of them, yes, you can mark a block, control S, and it will swap, or just do, you know, control S and hold it down and it repeats and it's doing it for you. So that we, we uh, that was actually, um, it, I, the funding we put towards that was actually more, to be honest, hoping that they would, it would be a Kickstarter to my idea of having a um, facilitator admin bounty uh, for Riscos Open. Now, that's not happened. Um, I'm hoping that they may eventually decide to do it. My idea was that I know that at the moment that the lads that run R uh, Rule are doing all voluntary in their own time and they just haven't got enough of it. They're not able to keep up with like submissions and keeping admin and that done really as well as it should be. So um, I feel it would be nice if, um, the, I know there are some like submissions to go into Riscos that, because they like, like checking it over and they just haven't, uh, they've been months and months and not and still aren't actually in the, um, the sources even of the nightly builds. So my idea is that to a new bounty where people could contribute, which would help pay for someone's time, I know, one or two days a month or something, and actually help sort of get rid of a, a bottleneck, as I see, in the development of Riscos. So that was our motivation behind it. It's sort of, they said, oh, well, there's this project that's sort of stalled. Um, would you be willing to fund that? So we, we funded that part of it. Um, right, the other, um, yes, other, other thing that I haven't actually got one with me to show you, but basically, um, if you've got a small network, I know a lot of people, they don't want to have lots and lots of boxes, so they've got an ADSL router, Wi-Fi router there, they've got a switch there, they've got, you know, um, uh, a USB um, print server there and whatever. So wherever possible, try and have a unit that um, combines things. And one of the reasons why people often will maybe have a switch as well as a router, not, might not be because their, uh, their router might have four ports, and they might only really need four ports. But if they're nowadays, more and more equipment has gigabit networking. So, um, and very few Wi-Fi routers have, they may have four ports, but they only 100 base. So we're now stocking some reasonably priced um, Wi-Fi routers that have four gigabit um, uh, network ports on them. And I think it only starts, I think it starts at 59 pounds for, for a four port uh, unit of that. 
So um, and we should have some of those with us um, today. Um, <clears throat> We'll come back to some of this hard bits of hardware I've got here, but um, this is um, the our new baby. Basically, the this is the iGIP-based um, new Riscos computer, and if you want to save two hundred pounds off it, please come up with a snappy name for it because calling it an iGIP V5 Riscos computer is not very good. Um, so we need a better name. And I haven't thought of anything, so uh, we, I haven't decided when the competition is going to finish. I'm going to want to try and leave it o o open so that uh, there is an issue of archive goes out and archive readers will be able to read it <laughs> and have a week or so before d doing that. But uh, So um, do, do try and uh, think up a name. I've given some details about the specification and actually some, well, on one posting made a lot of updates about saying that, because we want, some, we, we mentioned like who makes the board, ICE, um, and various other things, but obviously we would like to try and have something that um, either fits in with our Raspberry Row, Panda Row, and the Row, of course, stand for Riscos um, machines, so we can have something Row, or could be again something that is um, when when of course this is replaced because if, 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 uh, this this is not going to be in production in 15 years time um, but uh, so we don't know quite how long it will be um, it's going to be around for a while certainly we expect but uh, looking to the future because we don't necessarily want to go off down a particular one blind alley. So, what do you get um, with, with, with an IGET-based um, system? Well, the main, the main thing that you get here that you don't get in anything else is that the CPU, um, instead of being the Cortex-A9 CPU that is in um, Panda boards, um, our base systems, and IMX six, by, six based systems. Um, this one uses the Cortex A15. Now, it's not just this that can be clocked a bit faster, it's the fact that by being the next generation CPU, in the same number of clock cycles, it does more job. It does more, you know, more work. Uh, or, sorry, so effectively, it takes less clock cycles to do the same work. So um, it, it, we did a number of bench, there are, well, bench, well, sorry, I can say we did. We haven't actually done any benchmark timings. A couple of people have done some benchmark timings and published them on the Riscos Open Forums. And they basically show <coughs> um, significant uh, um, speed improvement. I think, like, well, I think it was one that, um, like, 200% faster, right? Three times the speed, theoretically. But, um, but most of the things are sort of seem to be 76% quicker, um, um, although that was comparing an overclocked Panda board with um, running at 1500 megahertz, whereas Panda board really should be running at 1200 megahertz, with running an iGET board at 1500 megahertz. Now, yes, what speed is the iGET board going to actually run at? Now that I don't know the answer yet. Um, the documentation, it does seem a bit, is, is contradictory. <coughs> At one point, they, there is mention of up to 2 gigahertz. But one, one, some other documentation refers to 1700 megahertz, but some later documentation omits the mention of 1700 and just talks about 1500. So we're anticipating 1500. There may be the option of going for, uh, for faster. Um, in particular, once um, uh, on, on the Panda board, there's, uh, oh, the, well, on the Panda board, because, which is using one of the OMAP, which uses an OMAP 4 based chip, and the iGET, the, the iGET, the Army, the Army, uh, sorry, the Cortex A15 is an OMAP 5 type chip, and an OMAP 5432. 
they both have what they call smart reflex. And this is where it detects that it's, um, it's got a job to do, so it goes at full speed, and then it sort of basically thinks nothing much is happening, so it drops down. So um, there's a little utility that will appear on your Panda um, icon bar saying, I'm running at 300 megahertz. Oh, you just told me to load something and render something. Oh, I'm running at 1200 megahertz. And then it drops back to 12, 300 megahertz. Now, the software that support that does that in the processor um, at the moment hasn't actually been um, done uh, for the OMAP 5 based system. Um, they've not, they've changed the software slightly of how you do it a bit, and he hasn't worked it out yet, um, really, um, for the piece who's doing that. But um, when that's done, we would hope to then integrate it into the same software that um, Chris Johnson has recently written, whereby he detects the, utilizes the temperature of the, within the chip, there are, in both OMAP chips, there are temperature sensors in the chip, so it will tell you the chip temperature, um, and if it will be, you'll be able to set a level, and then you, you say, well, if it goes over X speed, slow down. So, X speed, X and temperature, um, slow down, so that seems uh, a very good way of doing things. But in the meantime, because it, to avoid the possibility of damage things, um, the current version of the software for the iGet board, um, Willy has set it so it runs at 1000 megahertz. Um, so there's no chance of it overheating and damaging, but uh, once Smart Reflex is up and running, we'll have it um, basically running up at 1500, we anticipate, and possibly more. Now, the other thing is, yes, I've mentioned um, Willie Thies a bit. Now he did pretty well all the work for the uh, Panda board and has done, up until fairly recently, he had done all the work for the iGate board. But he was, his time is limited and you know, he was finding it difficult addressing all of this. So we, we were, um, we've been actually in contact with him over for some years now because um, like to do with the Panda board, um, he needed some extra documentation um, that he wasn't able to get. And as a business, we were able to do so. So we, by signing non-disclosure agreements and that, we have been able to get extra information um, out of Texas Instruments, who actually make the, the CPU, um, the, or the, well, the, sorry, the system on the chip. <coughs> because, yeah, so ARM designed the CPU, the TI then integrated into their system on the chip, and then the ISEE um, design onto the board. So we were saying, you know, what what needs doing, what uh, um, does he need help? So he said, well, yes, he would appreciate help. So um, seeing as um, Jeffrey Lee, I'm sure, has been sitting twiddling his thumbs for the last few little while, um, those people actually know I'm being facetious here because if you are frequenters of the Risk or Safe Forums, you'll realise he is absolutely prodigious and. Well, I think single-handedly he must have done 30, 40%, maybe even more, of the work on, on Riscos over the last few years that has ended up in the actual ROM. He's very significant, and he knows what he's doing and um, all that. So we, are, we asked him if he was being, might be willing to do some, some work, and we could lend him a board if, uh, if need by on it, and he replied, well, I've bought one of the boards. Um, so he's he has not. Um, he, he said like he would. Uh, one of the problems was uh, that we did have was just trying to load a program quite often caused a crash. Um, if you turn the cache off, if you load the program, then you turn the cache back on, and oh, it seemed to be all right. Um, but uh, in actual fact, it took a Jeffrey, I don't know, well certainly less than two weeks, and he came up with a, a fix which. Um, yep, basically means that it's much, much more reliable um, in that area. There are still um, various issues to be addressed, but, um, um, which I'll go into in a, in a moment. Um, but, you know, things are moving on that side. Also, one of the other areas um, it has been um, USB. Um, it's working, um, but it's not working as fast as it should do. And... Uh, there have been some uh, 
some problems there. One of the main problems at the moment is that when it boots, um, USB sort of goes into limbo for 15 seconds and everything waits for 15 seconds at one point during booting um, for USB to start up again and then it carries on booting. So um, at the moment, uh, Colin, if, you, if you're into the risk Open control forums, you'll know that Colin has been doing, Colin Granville I think this is, um, uh, quite a bit of work on, on USB. So we've approached him and lent him and I get bored um, and he is looking at doing, helping out um, with that. So the current state of, um, of play, Stand here. It's rather too small a writing for me to read otherwise. So yes, um, now this is this is where it, this is where it gets good. Um, uh, HDMI, uh, HDMI outputs, graphics output, and EDID. The because the uh, EDID is now in the standard Riscos um, uh, build um, that is supported, and that was quite useful to enabling us to get some monitors um, up and running with it. It does seem a little bit temperamental in that some, even in its lowest default mode of what's it like 640 by 480, some monitors don't seem to like its output. But um, uh, you know, it, it's just a matter of finding the right output at the moment. Um, there are, but the thing is, the um, GPU, the graphics process unit that's on the chip. <coughs> It can do a theoretical maximum of 2048 by 2048. Now, yet to see a monitor that's 2048 by 2048, but it basically means that any, you can use any monitor, um, well, 2048 by whatever. Now, they used to make a 2048 by 1152 monitor, and we actually have a couple second hand of those. Um, actually, I think we have one new, unfortunately, the new one doesn't have a digital input. VGA input, but um, uh, Dell did one um, and a VGA uh, HDMI input uh, or a DVI input, I can't remember which. But anyway, basically, um, that will, it's 2048 by 1152 because 1152 is a funny number, but what it means is that it's still 16 to 9 um, aspect ratio. Um, but because there are monitors around that will do higher, um, so we have. Um, basically, well, I on Thursday quickly knocked up an MDF of, um, well, someone else had an MDF, a uh, very good, he's been involved a bit, um, on the sidelines of 2048 by 1280, and that worked, so I then also thought, well, what about 2048 by 1440? Because, of course, you can get monitors that are um, 2760 by 1440. So um, I know there are a lot of people, certainly from my, myself, I'm not actually really interested in actual width on a red monitor. I want in height to get more of the, more of my document or whip or uh, you know web page on the screen. You know, with a with a widescreen monitor, I can't. The number of times you know you look at say like a web page, and by the time you've got all the bar various bars that. Especially if you're using that like Windows, so you've got your Google Two bar and your other bars and the various other desktop furniture on the screen, and then a banner that the site decides to put on the top of their thing. The actual information that you want to get to is you've got to scroll down, you know, so two screen fools to see any of it. But um, so extra height. So um, basically, yes, the uh, 2760 by 1440 monitor. They're, they're not cheap, but they are not ridiculously expensive. Um, uh, and now, so what we've we've done is we've got a couple of them. We've got a 25 inch and a 27 inch, um, and both of them will do, you know, the well, 2048 by 1152 because that means you get correct aspect ratio, so round circles. Um, you can, and they will also do. 2048 by 1280 or by 1440. Now, 1440, yes, circles are starting to be a bit, you know, it's down text a bit squashed. But I know at least one person has said, looking at it on the screen, now it's too squashed for me. But 
2048 by 1280. Yeah, I can live with that. So, and in actual fact, those monitors, because um, I haven't had a chance yet to try that, but um, they do, I do know that they will do some low refresh rates um, because they even actually EDID did report um, that they did some 30 hertz refresh rates modes on some options. Um, so we are looking at, we'll be looking to try and do an MDF on that will, uh, well I know someone, that, well, at least one person has got their uh, Raspberry Pi doing 2560 by 1440 uh, because the, the GPU in the uh, Pi will do it and uh, uh, these monitors will do it at the right, obviously at the right fresh rate now the not even like the Raspberry Pi will do that at 60 hertz, so it would rely on the monitor being able to accept a low rate refresh rate. Um, talking of, of monitors, actually, whilst I, before I go on um, further on the iGet board, I'll do a side, slight side track. Sorry, how's time going? Right, I'll have to be quick because I do want to allow options for questions. Um, now, one problem I know a lot of people have is that they um, they have a mixture of systems, old, so they've maybe got a, uh, um, a RISC-PC or an Ionix, um, and yet they will now want to integrate that with, and have a, a KVM that copes with both. Now, this, if you can um, either use a USB interface on the uh, on the on the Risk PC, or it's only say it's uh, um, just an Ionix you're wanting to do, um, this one can be the job do the job for you. Because whilst it's basically it's a DVI I um, with a DVI USB KVM, the main nice fact about this is what it's actually a DVI I. So that means that you, with the right cabling adapters, you could feed in either analog monitor or digital monitor. And then by using this cable, which is a DVI-I cable, you then wire the VGA to your VGA connector on the monitor, your DVI to your DVI connector on the monitor. So you basically, it's, um, uh, and it swaps automatically, therefore, when you swap on here, it uh, gets around one problem that a lot of people um, have with that. So back to the um, the I get the other limitations or things. So yep, sounds working, networking seem to be some issues um, with that, but uh, it is setting. Share FS window one, which is to with um, right when you're running share, that seems to improve that through its reliability tremendously. Um, SDFS at the moment is, is um, well, how do you describe it? Unreliable, it should only be used to load the OS ROM file. Well, ultimately, uh, on, the, on the board here, there is actually some flash RAM on chip um, on, the, on the iGet board. Ultimately, it would be nice if the operating system could be held in that, and then you actually wouldn't even use an SD card at all um, on it. Um, but that's something for a later date. Um, CMOS, well, um, it supports rules CMOS widget. It's a work from Spro. Um, and that was mainly actually because it could do like the Pi does um, and use uh, CD. Um, CD CMOS module, but um, whilst CD, the CDFS is not particularly reliable, we're not wanting, uh, really doesn't want to utilize that at the moment. Real time clock, that, that's working, although as people may know, on things like on the Panda board, I think it was one of the Beagle board, sorry, the, um, was it the Beagle board? I get confused here. But um, you really need some software to, to monitor and uh, and set the charging rate, that hasn't been 
down here, but it's all relatively minor aspect. Um, I squared C, that's all working, so that has been a meant that we've been able to do a version of our power control module, which is controlled via I squared C, that's this little board that's here. Um, and uh, it just does the job of, therefore, allowing you to have soft power on, soft power off, filing system activity, and if you go um, the full version of even allows you to have red for filing system write and green for the filing system read. Um, <clears throat> now the one thing that hasn't been implemented yet is SATA. Um, SATA is, um, is uh, something that's being worked on but we can't commentate any further at the moment. But, uh, <clears throat> Do you, do you feel free to set yourself up whilst I finish off <laughs> talking? I, suspect I might overrun. Um, <coughs> right. Um, so, um, we also have um, Adrian Lee, he's also done some work on the iGet board. Um, that's right, Adrian Lee's, let's get it right, um, of Amiral, and he's now got Amiral running for, for, for it. And to be honest, actually, I don't know what basis he, that's going to be available, whether it'll be a free or a charge for when I need to contact him about that. But that is um, up and running. Um, and. Um, so basically the thing is what we're now offering is because we thought, well, people, some people like to get their hands on stuff and, well, could live with the, the limitations um, and a few problems they've got at the moment. So what we're actually doing is the um, early adopter scheme. And if you want to, you can, and people have already done so, bought, bought one of the boards in the current state. Um, things like, ultimately, uh, when the SATA, at the moment, we, to get this, because we have a SATA um, SSD drive tucked underneath here, but it, has, it is connected up via a USB to SATA controller. Um, and uh, once the SATA software is available, um, you would actually just need to unplug this cable here, which goes to the air there, and plug in this cable, which goes to the, because uh, the SATA connector is underneath um, on, the, on the iGet board, plug it in, and uh, so you don't really, really need to actually it to be um, returned to us to have that uh, update when that appears. And so basically, um, <coughs> the, uh, the the board, the system, the complete system, the we have options of cases that vary the price and extra can, um, ports, and sizes of SSD. But the basic system, um, being the uh, uh, you know, the fastest with the next generation computer system with the next generation CPU, as I keep saying, um, is, is basically 725, so slightly above um, uh, our rivals. Um, but what we're saying at the moment is, whilst it's... Sorry. <laughs> no, no, do, 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 just one second, I'll clear away my stuff and then you can see. Um, then, um, but also what we're saying, early adopters, um, we can, we can, we'll supply it. We basically take a hundred pounds off the 725 uh, price, and when the SATA driver becomes available, you pay a hundred pounds and you get your SATA driver. So you get the machine at a discount in the meantime, and uh, ultimately get what you want. Um, so any questions? So, um, Chris, the, the iGEP, um, you mentioned about the longevity of, of the product, so is that something that you, you're mindful of when you chose the, the board? The, the, we, we know that um, it is used for a variety of things and it's going to be around, but obviously it's going to be, there'll be, they haven't said, oh, it will definitely be in production for 10 years or something, but the thing is, by, well, this is the whole, goes back to our whole thing of Riscos Hearts. If in, if in five years' time, and with most Riscos kit, it seems to last well more than five years, but if, if say, the motherboard was to die in five years' time, we almost certainly have another 
uh, and and it wasn't a direct replacement wasn't available, we'll, have, we'll probably have the next one that is replacing the IGEM available to go in because that's the whole thing. If something is mini ITX case based, then you know putting one of these boards in there is you know can be done into pretty well any mini ITX case. So am I over time? Right, well, we, um, I will be plugging it back in and turning it all on and uh, on the stand and do come along and have a look at it and of course one of the products that, uh, that um, looks quite nice on it um, and we can utilise all our nice extra resolution is, is uh, what's it called? Risk ISM. Oh, Risk ISM! They're going to come and talk about it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>